All right, everybody. It's been over two years since I did my last Clover 6 video and things have changed. So I'm tired of getting calls, tired of being in trouble for not having an updated video. So here you go. We're gonna have an updated video on the Sightcare Clover 6 handheld video magnifier. Welcome to Irie AT, Braille and Television. All right, so inside the box, besides the Clover 6 video magnifier, which you obviously get in the box, you get a carrying case, a nice carry pouch. You also get the product manual, show you all how to use the device. Get a uh, power cord, put that into the wall and into the device to charge it. You get a HDMI cord for plugging into a larger screen. Get a cleaning cloth, cleaning it up. And you get a small strap, a wrist strap, as well as a full-on neck strap. Pretty cool deal. Quite a few things in our little treasure box. All right, so this guy is really cool. Clover 6, it's super, super portable. That's one of the great things about it. It's less than 10 ounces, so really light. It's also the thinnest one. It's less than an inch thick, I think 0.82 or something. Really thin, portable magnifier. You know, that's kind of what you want is something you can carry around with you, something you always have with you, but also has a six inch screen. It has a wide screen design. So you really get a lot of text under there for such a small portable light design. So one of the great things about the unit is not only is it light and portable, it's also a really quality unit. So you've got two 13 megapixel cameras on the back of it. The top one's for near, uh, the other one's for distance view. Also has a full HD touch screen. So you're gonna get a really good 1080p full HD image on it. And it's also a touch screen. One of the other cool things about this, you've got a fold out handle on it. Uh, one part is to fold it down so it sits at a 45 on the desk. And then you also can extrude that handle. You can swing it out, you can have it in really any way you want it, have it left-handed. It's a very, very cool thing. I want to move it here. It's going to stay there. I want to move it however I want to move it. Um, really adds to the versatility of this device. All right, and so if I want to see at a distance, I can just pivot this handle. It'll pivot in, pivot out. See what you can see about that on the camera. Um, makes it super easy to see counter signs. You can see signs at a distance. You can see counter menus, uh, really cool holding it like a magnifying glass, but still able to see at a distance. All right, so to operate the Clover 6 video magnifier, you're going to want to charge it first. You get it out of the box, there's uh, on the right side, a circular port up near the top, metallic port, and the round end of your power adapter will go into that. Plug that guy in and uh, plug the other end of the power adapter into the wall and start charging the unit. Now when you do that, when you plug it into the device and into the wall, there'll be a green light that comes on on the device and you will know that it's charging. That green light will go off again once it's fully charged. It takes about two, two and a half hours to charge. It gives you about three to five hours of operation of the device between charges. So there's a couple ways to turn on the device. One is just to press the power button on the top left side. You just hold that down for a couple of seconds. It'll turn green, give you a vibration, and then the device will come on. And you'll see the Sightcare splash screen, the Clover 6 splash screen, and then you'll notice the LED lights come on, and then the device will be ready to use. You can also turn on Clover 6 just by pulling down the handle into the reading position. All right, so to read, all you have to do is just place Clover 6 on top of the reading material and you can move it around and read away at your pleasure. You can also extend the handle and then you can use Clover 6 like a magnifying glass. This is especially useful if you're out and about, maybe you're trying to check prices at a, at a supermarket or you're trying to read a menu in a dark restaurant. It's real handy to just be able to use this also as a magnifying glass and still have all the advantages of a, a digital video magnifier. So if you were out and about and you wanna read at a distance, all you have to do is you pivot the handle in and then it'll give you a picture of a mountain or something on the screen give you there's a picture of flowers if you're doing close view a picture of mountain if you're doing a, a far view and then you can hold it up and you can you know, look at signs or look at menus across the counter at starbucks or you know wherever you are it gives you a 
really nice distance view. So if you want to zoom in and out, there's two ways to do it. You've got a couple of buttons on the right side, two rectangular white buttons with a plus and a minus on them. The plus will increase the magnification and then the minus button will decrease the magnification. Now you also have a touch screen on this. So I can pinch and zoom, use two fingers, spread them apart, and I can uh, increase the image or then I can pinch them together and decrease the image. And in addition to that, if I want to read around and I don't want to move the device the whole time, it's real handy, I can just move my finger on the screen and do live panning. So wherever I am, I can see the entire magnified image. I just press on the screen, I move around, I can go up and down. However, so that allows me to not move the device quite as much, helps a real ergonomic uh, feature there. If you wanna change the contrast colors, you've got a couple of white rectangular buttons on the left side of the device. You've got one that has a square, and that one will change through the various contrast colors. I can press that and cycle through all of my high contrast colors. And then the other rectangular button on the, on the left side has a circle in it, a colored circle. When I press that, then I'm gonna get full color. So if I'm looking at photographs or whatever, make sure I get on top of something that's color. So I can press that one with the circle if I want to use full color for using photographs and, and whatever else. Now what's really cool about this is you've just got one button for each. So if I'm viewing something that's in color, I press the color button and I'm good. If I go back to reading, all I have to do is hit the high contrast button, the one with the square quickly, and then I'm back to my favorite contrast color. It will remember what I wanted. So photograph, one button, reading, one button, and just makes operation really easy when it remembers your favorites. If you want some guidance on where you're reading, there's a lines and blinds button. That's the blue button up on the left top side here. And that'll give me, now I've got a horizontal marker on there, can read along and keep my place in the line. Um, now, if I press it again, I get one for columns. I also have the ability to just blind out stuff if I wanna do it that way, either horizontally or vertically. And then I can also change those. So if I want to change the place of those lines, I can just move it on the screen to where I want it. And I can also change if I move right or left, I'm gonna get this so that it's going to change the size of the line. You know, so depending on whether it's, uh, now if I do the column one, that one will change position if I go right or left and then change its side up and down. So it'll depend on which direction it's going, but you can adjust those and make, make those work the way that you want to. All right, so if you wanna freeze an image or save an image, that's what the button on the right top side, the orange button is for. You press that, let me get over something, press it once, and you get a frozen image that'll stay on there. Um, if maybe it's a price at a store or something, you wanna freeze the image, come down and take a look at it, and then you can pan around it, you can move it, you can change the contrast, do whatever you wanna do there. Um, now, I'm gonna press it again, and that'll get me back out of the, um, the frozen mode, back to live mode. So let's say I wanna save the image. This is really cool. I'm gonna hold down this button, and then it's gonna pop up a thing with a microphone. So it not only allows me to save it, it'll also give me the opportunity to save it with a voice label. So then when I'm looking through the picture gallery later and I wanna find out what it is, it's right there, it tells me what it is. Really pretty cool. So this time I'm gonna hold it down. Hold it down. Now we get the camera click button on my microphone. This is my cool image, yoo -hoo. All right, so I just made a voice label, save the image, really cool. Now, if I wanna get into the picture gallery, I wanna retrieve images that I've saved, I'm gonna hold down that uh, full color button, the, the true color button. I'm gonna hold that down for a couple of seconds, maybe three or four seconds. It's gonna vibrate, and then it'll give me this picture menu. And I don't know if you can see from there, you've got, you've got a few on here that are, um, they have little, looks like audio marks on them. So I'm gonna press that. And let's see, I'll hold that up so maybe you can hear a little better. Actually, I'll hold it up to me since I'm the mic. This is my cool image. This is my cool image. Let's see what I had another one in here. This is my saved image. This is my saved. That was not nearly as exciting a voice label. 
Anyway, makes it really cool and easy to, um, to retrieve your pictures and then know what they are and you can pull up that favorite recipe or whatever else that may be. Okay now, and when I wanna leave the picture gallery, what I can do is I can either press the power button or I can press on the screen and that will bring me back to my, well, my frozen image. And then I can just press the freeze button again, lights come back on and I know I'm back into live mode. <laughs> if you use this guy a lot, you're going to eventually run out of memory. So you've got a couple things you can do there. One is there's a USB port on the top of it and that you can connect a USB cord into a computer and then dump your images onto a computer. You also have an SD card input on this and you can put in a micro SD, put that on to, um, you know, plug that into a USB reader or something and then transport the images to your computer or elsewhere just using an SD card. And you can even load images on here. If you wanna change any settings on the device, you can just short press the power button. That should be green while it's on, just tap that. And then the settings will come up and give you a variety of options. You can change the volume of the sounds that the device makes. You can change the screen brightness, check the battery status, turn on and off the power saving, turn on and off the vibration. You can adjust the lighting, turn that on and off or brighten or, or lower it. You also can change the autofocus. That's all just right there. So when you're done with this menu, you can either short press the power button again or just wait eight seconds and it will go off by itself. All right, so if you wanna view this on a larger screen, you can plug that into an HDMI. There's an HDMI um, plug right on the top of the device, right near where you plug in the power port, but on the, on the top side. You plug in the included HDMI cable into your Clover 6 and plug the other end into a larger monitor, and then it will project everything from the Clover 6 camera up onto that larger monitor. All right, when you're all done with the device, you long press the power button and you get two options on there. One would be to sleep, one would be to power off. You can either tap those on the screen, tap a button, it'll switch between them. And I just tapped a button, went to power off, and now it's powered off. Lights are off. I just fold it up, put it in the protective carry pouch, and I'm on my way with my Clover 6 handheld video magnifier. Make sure to subscribe to the Irie AT YouTube channel for free training resources, as well as the latest information about Braille and low vision products.